Hello and welcome to Supreme Commander Forge Alliance Forever. We finally got rid of that uh, surf and loading screen. So ugly. Much prefer the, the other ones. Cyber looks nice. So this is uh, Ladder Arena. And I'm going to cast the final games of the March Ladder Arena here. Starting with game number five. Yes, five, and we're at two games apiece. So, dead even between Blood Deer in the purple Cyber and Torin in the yellow UEF. The map is Abhor and it's made by Bias. Yeah, it might be it probably my favorite map by Bias. He's done a lot of remakes of maps and some are better than others but uh, I like this map this is an original map it has these nice skulls to look oh they're very nicely done and the gameplay of course is the most important thing for me and uh, you can see it has a lot of a lot of different uh, lanes it has this big nice uh, open middle area with quite a bit of mass to uh, to fight over it has bits of reclaim spread around but not a lot of natural reclaim. Thankfully, I I think a lot of maps go far overboard on the on those uh, the natural reclaim. It can really make maps very boring, actually. But anyway, enough of map stuff. The game. It's uh, Torin, and we can see Torin has a different build order here to Blitter immediately. Torin's already has two engineers building this hydrocarbon here. Bladir, oh, that's very strange actually. Bladir sending one engineer to this hydro. That's quite strange because for one, it'll take over a minute to build this hydro alone. And second, he could already be heading towards this mass, which is probably the better option, I think, than stopping to build that hydro. It's going to be too slow. Generally, in the early game, you don't want to build a hydrocarbon with a single engineer. You can see what Torrent's doing here. And that's because uh, a hydro is quite cheap, it's very efficient. But uh, it has still has a decent build time on it, so usually it's built with the multiple engineers or also the uh, the ACU. ACU needs an engineer to start it, but uh, that's all. So we have second land from both players. Not unusual because there's a lot of mass and it's sort of forward. You can see the reclaim is quite far forward. We got T2 Rex here, Wagner's in the water. And uh, we got T2 units over here. We got pillars, some Mantis, engineer maybe. Got subs and more Wagner's in the back. So you want to make land units to, uh, to defend, especially the engineers going forward. And the ACU can go to a lot of different places. You'll see it often go to the middle. You might see the ACU from the top walk along this way and then arrive at this point to try and close off this expansion from being attacked. That uh, became more common. Early on, you would uh, this map isn't that old, so uh, when it first came out, you would often just see ACUs in the middle area moving around. But they can be... They this can be a good spot, but it can also be dangerous. I mean, you do have some water to hide in and stuff. But uh, yeah, you can you can push towards middle. You can go to the the other side. But for now, well, we'll just see what they what they plan to do. They're going to stay in the base because there's a lot of uh, early resources. So they're going to stay in the base and build for quite a while before moving out. So we finally have an air factory. Wow, this is very late for Blood Air. Torrent has gone for third air. And he also. Got that hydro. Torn's finished, or Bladir's finished his hydro. He has a second one he can still build. And Bladir has five factories, four land and one air. And. Oh, he's actually going immediately for another air factory. Okay. Torin, meanwhile, is actually behind in his uh, base building, it seems. Only finished his fourth land factory now. If we look at the reclaim, Torin definitely ahead. 500 mass ahead on reclaim, but very even on total mass generated. So you can see Tornally finishing this, whereas Bladir's had this for a little while. I think Bladir needs to uh, start going for this hydro. 
right about now. There's no reason not to build it. It's close and it's very efficient. So we have a bomber coming from Torun, unsurprising, considering Bladir's later air. But he only has one inti. Torin that is. And uh, also Bladir actually. But two more about to come out. And this bomber, well, if he gets this engineer kill, it would be nice. If it was slightly faster, it would have been even better because it would have denied the reclaim as well. So the engineer grabs all the reclaim before dying. Bladir with uh, quite a few units on the left side. And you can see Torin immediately reacting. He doesn't have enough units here to defend, so he'll have to stop the attack on this side. If Bladir chooses to attack. Torn moving into middle of this ACU. Bladir still building more and more factories in his base. And now moving on the left to try and do a bit of damage. So quite a slow start to this map. Because there are quite a lot of resources to grab. But still a very passive opening from both players. You can definitely get in and do some raids and stuff but we didn't see any labs or anything and only one bomber that wasn't very early either so little damage done yet and so Torrent has well he seems to have well he definitely has a better score a bit more mass and he has a T2max 70% of the way going straight for a T2max very quickly very early on using the reclaim he's got a, a transport out there are plateaus on this map that you have to drop. So we have two mechs here and reclaim, mechs here and reclaim. We have one here, the bottom of this skull. I'll again, more reclaim and a mech and mirrored on the other side. So important to drop those and get that mass income and the reclaim quickly. I think we'll probably see teacher land in the next few minutes. This map. Uh, oh wow, Bloodier already moving to T2 land. He's got some assistance on there. This map, you need uh, you need a lot of units because there's so much mass to uh, fight over. Say in the middle, you already have well, you have uh, eight mechs in the middle. Over here, five, six mechs over here to fight for, and you can see Bloodier doing a bit of damage, taking out those forward mechs, taking out this expansion and the radar. And the engineer suicides itself. Oops. So, Blinner doing a bit of damage. While also going to T2. You can see Torn also now moving to T2 land as well. A lot more air for Blinner it seems. Not surprising considering immediately they added that uh, second air factor. He's making his drops to the left. Torn's already dropped the left. And now Torn moves his ACU over to this choke point to try and take these mechs back and secure them. Bladir is in the middle of the map. And all of his units are, are coming towards the middle now. He did some damage here and then he left promptly. So you don't want to... There's no point in waiting here and losing your units. And then when Torn comes back to take the mechs, he also gets some reclaim back. Instead he kills the, kills the expansion and saves his units. So maybe they can kill it again in the future. Or at least help to kill it in the future. It probably could be up here. They could be assisting the PD. But but he's more worried about the middle. And he's just overrun the middle completely. He's taking the mechs with his ACU. He's killing a factory. And the, every single mech from Torin in the middle. So this is really nice damage that he's being allowed to uh, to do. He does have a few more Mantis than there are Strikers here, but it's, well, yeah, quite a few more, I guess. On the left, attempted attack, but Bladir groups his Mantis really nicely. You can see they're all firing, and usually at the same unit as well, so that's very nice defense. On the right side, though. With Torn has less units in the middle and the left. So unsurprisingly he has more on the right. And he's trying to use them as best he can to take out mechs of Bladir. As Bladir now drops the right side mechs. He's going to take those. And he's making rhinos out of his T2 factory. Do we have any support? 
Uh, well, we have w only one T2 Max, it seems. And one more on the way. Meanwhile, yeah, Torn only has one T2 Max. It's not unusual to uh, upgrade Maxes in the water where they're a bit more. Well, they're more difficult to spot. So it can be like hidden economy. And they are harder to raid as well, often. Unless your opponent has uh, torpedo bombers. So blitters in the water. Nobody making AC upgrades just yet. It's been mostly T1 battle. And over here, there's no defenses for Torin's expansion at all. He's really low on units right now, it seems. I'm not sure why. I guess it's the uh, factories upgrading to tech 2 support factories. We have two now. One just finished. He is losing that, that expansion on the right. Now he has a he has a couple of pillars here. Needs to maybe regroup. Oh, he's getting caught by the mantis. You can see once the mantis actually surround these T2 units, they can do nice damage and uh, take out some pillars. But if they don't, if they're not able to surround them, then uh, they're not going to do very well. Oh, nice raid! How did this get here? <laughs> Just a couple tanks and a scout. Taking out a mix and heading to the back, that's quite annoying. Bombers also doing nice damage. Wow, look at that. Nine kills, 350 damage on that bomber. It's got a few passes. Still hasn't been taken out. Bloodier for sure still has more air. It seems like he has had for quite a while. Maybe he will go T2 air. At the minute, he's just making T1 bombers. And we still have quite slow echoing from both players. They really have to invest in units because there's so many mechs to fight for as I said earlier. You can see them doing damage. Back and forth. Torin, oh a nice drop here. A PD invested to take back this uh, little plateau at the back of his base and also there's still some mass left here so that's nice. A nice uh, capture there and the longer the game goes on the more that would have helped Bladir having that extra mechs from Torrent. Can't really underestimate those uh, smaller things if you get the plateaus and the rest of the game stays even you're gonna be in a really nice position. So oh we do have T2 air, T2 P gen, oh it's right next to a energy storage. I hope we get some shielding here perhaps. Torrent doesn't look like he's uh, going to be moving to T2 air anytime soon. He's not really investing as much into the air game. He does have two air factories, but he's behind an in Inti's somewhat. Bladir is going for the air fight, and if he doesn't bring all of his Inti's, this might go extremely badly for him. Actually, I think this is accidental. The oh no, that's a nasty waste of air for, uh, for Bladir. That is... A bad miss micro and he may actually lose air because of this now a, a flak comes out of this support factory in the middle it looks like bloodier is getting good fights on well let's see actually let's see how the pillars are doing we have a couple of we have several rhinos and a lot of reclaim building up these have been back and forth battles here in the middle there's quite a lot of pillars building building up on this side the pillars trying to get through but now Corsair is coming in to try and take them out stop them from getting too far T2 mechs coming in the back we have four T2 mechs in the core for Bladir Torn is a bit behind so you would expect him to be head on units and he's now catching these rhinos you can see the rhinos have a bit more range than the pillar they have to be kiting. You can see a lot of pillars got into range of those rhinos and got some very nice trades there. So pillars showing their value. On the left, Torn is trying to send a lot of mantis into the back of Bladir's base. Now there's no T2 mass in the back. And this formation is really nasty because it's a, it's a small choke and they're kind of getting messed up on this mountain a bit. 
as Mantis will do. And I, th in the last couple of minutes, the game has turned for Bloodier. He took some. Well, I think uh, he's invested a lot more in Eco in that time. Well, actually, no. I take it back because I spot the water mixes. But uh, he took some some bad trades in the middle. The pillars did well, and uh, he's also getting raided here. But the main thing is, well, one of the one of the worst things was that air fight. That was quite. Uh, quite a problem. This actually may be a problem for Bloodir if he deposits all this mass. He needs to uh, try and keep these units alive as long as possible. Maybe spread them out into different locations. Send some towards this way to maybe kill the Hydro. Try and do some more damage. Just try and keep units chasing these Mantis as long as possible. Because, I mean, they're definitely going to get wiped out quickly by these pillars. He needs to just run, try and run away and keep the pillars in the back of Torin's base if he can. Oh, Bloodier's dominating air now. Torin doing a suicide of his own, it seems. I don't know why his, all of his interceptors are there. Maybe they're killing this, uh, this Corsair here. Now we have a pillar gets to the back. Oh, an artillery. Uh, that's going to take out this mass extractor. Thankfully, it's only 2% upgraded, so not a huge loss. And Bloodier's actually ran the whole way around this army and the ACU. And maybe he can escape. Maybe he can run out of the base. That would be probably the best result for him. <laughs> the best result po No, definitely the best result possible for these Mantis. And they are going to get bombed on the way out, though. And maybe, yeah, some of them will get caught. But still, four mass extractors, hydrocarbon. They're denied for a decent amount of time. That's a pretty nice raid to pull off. The difficulty looking at Bladir's army is uh, maybe the lack of T2 units. We only have six rhinos in the middle. And they're actually getting bombed as well. Look at the look at the bombers. The, there's napalm everywhere. Oh, it's a Janus. I thought that was just a lot of T1 bombers doing that, but no. It's Janus from Torrent. And we all saw what they did on Osiris. We all saw what those Janus did on Osiris to poor Bladir. Yeah, Bladir was already behind at the time, but still he's gotta be maybe getting flashbacks at some point from that. Now let's see how many pillars we have, because I feel like we have quite a lot. Well, 26. 26 pillars, 5,000 mass in pillars. Only 8 rhinos. And only seven Medusa. That's a huge, huge problem. The Rhino, there's. Uh, I feel like there's too many Mantis in this in this uh, army. Too many Mantis still being built from Bladir. We need a lot more Medusa to stun these pillars and really crush them. That's a lot of Mantis getting destroyed here. Bladir's units kind of split, and maybe these factories at the front are uh, are in danger now. That would be. That would be a nasty loss to lose all this uh, forward, forward production. The Janus are coming for the factories as well. And Bladir is trying to fight air directly over support factories. And that's really dangerous. Because you can see here this flak is getting kills. Now maybe Bladir can dodge away. But he's going to lose some surely. Well he actually didn't lose many inties. I think he took damage on quite a few of them though. Corsairs drafted in, but there's wow, many flak in here. We got four, I can see at least. That is that's that's going to be pretty effective. Oh, the skull just took a headshot from these corsair missiles, blocked the uh, blocked the missiles completely. On the left side, the PD is down, and this nice mix of units. We got a flak. We got a lot of pillars. They're going to run over this because again, it's only mantis. There's only Mantis here. Maybe this ACU... Wow, this is a gun ACU now. I don't know if it's moved out of the water. <laughs> but, uh... I think this this gun ACU... Oh, wow, there's T2 Mexes here. And no TMD. This needs to be defended by the ACU for sure. Also, Torin is going to T3 land. He's already one-third of the way. Now, he's not assisting very much. So it's not going to be too quick. 
But he probably also is limited by mass there as well, to be honest. Yeah, he's gonna gonna stall in the near future. Unless uh, some upgrades are about to finish. But it doesn't look like they are. This is a lot of a lot of economy here on this side that's not protected. Now we do have finally a PD, but one PD versus uh what is that? Six pillars. And the artillery is gonna kill it now. Now some rhinos appear. Maybe that will be enough. We maybe this corsair can uh, come in and do something. Because he really can't lose all of these T two mechs. He's definitely losing one. Quite a lot of reclaim has already been taken. Bladir is actually ahead on reclaim now. Oh, another T two mex goes down. Yeah, it does. But the army dies in Bladir's territory. He's now dropping engineers over to as quickly as he can uh, to uh, take back the reclaim and the ma and the mass extractors. Air could be really important to uh, take out all of this uh, these plateaus. We have a T two mex up here. Is there TMD? We have a single TMD on the map. It's pretty risky. Pretty risky. You can lose one TMD very quickly. Only only a thousand HP on those things. Or 500 if you're Aeon. No Aeons in this game. Actually, Tutorin has zero TMD. Zero. Nil. But what he does have is a Percival. Here we go. It's time for T3 land and oh my god, Bladir needs to react immediately. He is so far behind on this T3 upgrade. He needs to, uh, well, retreat his army and also uh, start start this T3 land upgrade with all the engineers in his base pretty much. He doesn't have that many engineers around to assist him. So he needs to get started. Otherwise, this, uh, these Perseys are going to do a lot of damage. Now, Bladir does have a lot of Corsairs. Many, many Corsairs. This perfect target here, completely undefend, undefend, indefensible. <laughs> Not undefendable. Indefensible. Pretty much. Could build some anti air, but that's not happening. This This should be killed quite easily. These plateaus can be taken back with air for sure. And you know, maybe, well, this army is pretty safe to be honest. Look at all of these flax here. Can't really, can't fuck with that to be honest. And now Blitter's actually moving in with his, uh, his rhinos and now, yeah, he thinks better of it. This Percival will eat those rhinos alive. The only nice thing about uh, rhinos here is that they will, uh, they'll take one shot from a Percy and the second shot will overkill them quite heavily so they're not the not the worst unit versus a Percival but um, they're definitely not going to be trading well if Torin just uh, has some decent micro so still quite an even game but but Bladir is ahead he he um, well, he's ahead on score and economy, but he's definitely behind in the in the tech department. So much T3 land already for for Torin before there's even the HQ. I mean, it's one third finished right now, and Torin has at least four Percivals. Five Percivals. Wow. That that could be really very very bad for for Bladir. You can see Torin has less. Seems to have less T2 Mexes. Oh, now we have Corsairs coming in to try and snipe power. But there is a shield and actually neither Pigeon has gone down now. And there's... Look at all of these flak. There's still flak pumping out of these factories. Torn has made so much flak. And, you know, 20 flak, it's only 3,000 mass. It's not very expensive. He also built this shield. And the shield has actually recharged already. Defending the second Pigeon just in time and this attack utterly failed you can see I mean this hurt Torrent 
if he had lost the second pigeon, it would have hurt him more. But even so, it's it's not that bad. He has a pigeon over here. And now, Bladir doesn't have to be afraid of those Corsairs anymore. That was, I, I mean, at least seven Corsairs were used there, maybe more. And you, that's a lot of mass deposited over the base of Torrent. Now Bladir committing his, his T2 land attack, his forces. But even these three Percivals are very unlikely to go down. And there's more units mixed in and more units coming out of the factories. Blood, you're just attacking everywhere right now, and I think these attacks are not going to be efficient. Look at this. These Rhino Rex, easily defended by PD and the uh, Percivals. On the right side, bombers getting taken out. This fight, well, uh, you can see how much damage some of these Percivals have done. Like this one here, 1500 massive damage. And I don't think Bladir is going to get this reclaim. More Corsairs building now. Bladir's making bricks finally. How many bricks do we have though? Probably only the one so far. It's a lot of T2 at the front. And it's getting ranged by the... Oh no, the rhinos are hitting the ground it seems. They're too close to this hill. You can see, obviously, they cannot shoot down this hill. He needs, he can't really, he can't stand um, here. He really can't really go for more uh, closer. He can't go closer to the base than, than about this fire, to be honest, thanks to the, the hill at the front of the base. Very difficult for the rhinos to, uh, well, impossible for the rhinos to shoot units uh, here. If he's standing here. Also, the only way... It's, this is basically perfect for the, the Percivals. Because they can fall back. And as soon as the Rhinos are actually getting into range. They start shooting the ground. Look at this. And the Percivals meanwhile have a, have a higher stance. So their gun is higher up. So they can shoot much easier. Although they are also hitting the hill. But... Still very good for the Percivals because they never, uh, they're not uh, getting surrounded by those rhinos. And now there's more and more Percy's building. It's really, this is getting to be a scary army now with, with six Percy's and actually three over here moving in on the left. I don't know what's going to stop them. The earlier T3 is now making a big difference when you have six Percy's here and they're going to, take out this entire T2 army without much trouble. Then on the left, oh there's two bricks going to be dropped over here but there's three Percy's and actually if he if he doesn't move this order he may be killed by the by the flax. But even if he lands now there's three Percy's one of them is uh, and actually the 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 bricks are going to take a bit of damage. Oh my god, what the... The Percy's just shot at the bricks while they were in midair. And then missed as well. They missed twice there. Oh, nice micro from Torin. You see that? Just barely saved this uh, this Percy. And now he's actually retreating because he's already killed uh, the economy. The Percy's even overkilling the T2 Mexes. So there's not even mass left for... For uh, Bladir to reclaim. Which is quite nasty. So many Percy's here. Need some some shields would be nice. We have th only three bricks here. Oh now artillery coming to the middle. And that could be a very very nice move. They have a stealth with them as well. Now a, a shield right next to them. Would be perfect because they're, a, they're, in, a, they're in a lot of danger. Could easily be killed by even T1 bombers. But Torrin also has T2 air, so. It's a possible threat. Gunships and uh, even Janus. It's 
making some T3 artillery of his own. Bloodier somehow has actually taken this expansion, which is quite uh, quite a nice move. Bloodier now has 92 mexes. He has how much storage? 19 mass storage. 12 T2 mexes. Only 6 storage. So, mass income, definitely, well, it's a, more for Bladir, thanks to the T1 mass and, uh, and the storages. Hmm. Oh, here we go. Shield commander for Torin. T2 and gun is already there for him. And now it's time for shield. And this army is going to be the target. This could be very dangerous for for Bloodir. Shield commander can do a lot of damage. And we have, let's see, only five bricks here. Five bricks is, uh, is just not going to be enough to do enough damage to that ACU once it has the shield upgrade. So it should be able to tank the damage of the bricks and probably if uh, Bloodier is not very, very careful, some overcharges are going to get in there. It's going to be difficult to deal with and I think what we need is uh, probably a lot of Corsairs. Uh, maybe some drops. A drop here would be nice. We have T2 Maxes, Storages. Oh, here come the T1 bombers for the trebuchets. Needs a couple more than that to take them out. So they're not going to get a second pass, but look at that. Only one more bomber would have killed us. They're very fragile units. They've actually lost their stealth as well. No stealth in this army at all, which is a problem that would also help greatly versus the ACU. As uh, its Omni is not this, not as large as its uh, gun range once it has the gun upgrade. Oh, we're going to lose a treb, are we? Oh, it gets out of the napalm just in time. Bloodier just backing up. He's just running from this, uh, this ACU. He has to prevent it from doing damage. He really, if he starts giving away bricks to uh, overcharge... He is going to be in a really nasty situation, so he retreats. He's going to try and regroup. And maybe try and get some good fights because they're Percy's... Wow, see this Percy that he saved earlier? Look at how much value he got out of that. This the, These kind of micro things are a big deal. Now it has veterancy. It just got HP back. And it's regening slowly. And it's still doing 100% of its damage, which is very significant. So, just saving that Percy over here is actually a nice help. Now the ACU has gone into range, and there goes a brick. If we look at Torrent storage, he has many storages. He has 24,000. Oh, and now the bricks are focusing the ACU. But the ACU still has... 30,000 HP on it now. Oh, he's getting s slightly surrounded. But he has 10 Percivals with him. 10 Percys to do damage. And the bricks are moving in. Torn is losing HP. He's down. He's still 6,000 on his shield. 3,000, 2,000. The shield is down. But he's about to hit his second vet. And he's, he has now... 12 Percivals around him as reinforcements arrive. Look at all of the dead bricks. This ACU has just tanked all the damage of this army while the Percy's killed everything. And now his shield is recharging. And once shields go down, they uh, recharge a lot faster than if they are just uh, regenerating. So he's going to have his shield back in uh, maybe a minute and a half or maybe two minutes or two or three minutes and he's still on 16,000 health 
He's killed the, basically all the, so many of the, those bricks. That whole army, all the T2 is dead, the T1. And these Percy's have just killed everything. Using the ACU as a, as a tank. Allowing them to do damage. Now Torn winning air it seems. He has Flax at the front. This Flak is getting a lot of kills. Oh no. Torn now has also the Tech 2 upgrade. That's going to be very nice for him. He can spam some factories. Some engineers can uh, take the reclaim. And he c there's a lot of things he could build right now. But this... This push with the shield commander was just a huge, huge victory for Torun. Great choice to go for the the shield commander right at that time. If you wait longer, if he if he goes for it a bit later, if there's more bricks in the middle, then he could easily get focused down by all the bricks and and kill. They do have a lot of damage, but. Uh, yeah, this uh, this went extremely well for Torun, and it looks very it looks near impossible for Bladir to come back here. Maybe maybe Bladir could hide in the water and maybe try get some laser and uh, <laughs> and kill Lazy. I don't know. Laser, I mean Torun's gonna keep all these Percy's right next to his ACU. He has a he has a static shield now. It's gonna be very. It would be very difficult to cheese this uh, a kill off this ACU. Here comes Splitter's ACU with try and get some overcharges in. And he has gotten some. But uh He I mean just a few shots from, from a Percival will kill this ACU. And the Percy does of course outrange the ACU as well. At least he has stealth, but there's there's air everywhere. Torrent is in a really commanding spot. T2PD is being used in the base. This H HQ is very vulnerable looking now. Bladir or Torrent. Well, what's the plan from there? There's another dead brick. That's a lot of T1 bombers coming in. Torrent can really do a lot of things. He could, he could just, uh, he could go T3 air. He could start building uh, PDs, build artillery, maybe build a, f a forward factory. He has a l so much build power here. Maybe he could make a forward T3 factory to uh, accelerate this. He's just moving in and out, trying to get more and more kills, thin down the number of uh, of bricks. Blitters trying to protect. His bricks with uh, these nice static shields. They're going down. Bloodier still has more economy somehow. It's really, really crazy actually that he does. But he only has, well he has 12 bricks here. But this shield needs to come back online to protect them. So similar number of, of T3 bots here actually. Definitely more for Torin, and he still has that amazing shield and gun commander, which still has a multiple vets to get. Torin now actually is starting T2 artillery. <laughs> it's not building it in the shield, of course. Why would you? Why would you build it under a shield? What possibilities are there for for Blender? Well, I guess he needs he needs T3 artillery for sure. Definitely needs some. And just as I say that one comes out of the factory. He needs some radar too. Oh my god. He has no radar coverage. That's a huge problem. He's also going to need more power. This is not a this is a risky spot. You want to be able to build more shields and upgrade them. So he's going to need a more T2 power. But let's look at the reclaim now. Yeah, Torrin is soaring ahead. Most of this is gone now. Still got a brick, some T2 around the place, but mostly 
while this middle area is mostly taken and Torn is 12k ahead. Now T2 Tech 2 artilleries are up and this T2 land T T3 land HQ is not defended by a shield and oh my god it's going to die very 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 soon and Bladir's reacting now starts pushing up the hill with all of his bricks now if he he needs to well I don't see how he can even take on this commander so it's under the shield he doesn't have enough damage I think to take out this ACU but he needs to try he needs to stop attacking first oh my god the overcharges are so nasty so many bricks just died there and the T3 land HQ is dead that means no more T3 land at all Torin's ACU getting targeted he still has 10,000 on his on his shield 21,000 on his commander's HP and every single brick brick is dead now just how says Bladir <laughs> just how <laughs> well my shield ACU that's pretty much how before that it was an even game a back and forth game but Bladir definitely had uh, had advantages he had the better economy for sure the later T3 land didn't end up punishing him as much as I thought it might have but uh, yeah oh. gotta say the decisive action was that uh, shield commander arriving at the front tanked so much damage and the Percival's behind the ACU did just wipe out Bladir's army basically he saved some bricks but that victory there in the middle was just far too much Bladir, uh, Bladir lost that fight very very heavily and so Torn wins and takes the lead 3-2 in the March ladder arena best of seven final and uh, we're going to finish the series right now. So let's jump into the next game right after we uh, finish this one. I got it ready. That was a nice game from Torrent. Well played. Bladir was doing well. Definitely was doing well. But his bricks got wrecked. Even if he was attacking, um, even if he was attacking Percival's there instead of instead of the ACU, well, I guess he he would have to run past the ACU to even do that. So he he just couldn't do it. Uh, we got the the sixth game on Desert Arena. Here we go. Obfuscation. Bladir. Torin Torinbar. Down here. And Torin has Aeon. Uh, which is interesting. Now this is a flat version of the map. Now that's going to be very nice for Aurora of course. There are versions where it's... These are... Depressions in the land. And uh, the lighter areas are... Higher up. And that can cause problems for, obviously, many units shooting the ground. So we have a nice flat version of Desert Arena. 5x5 five five map made by Ozone X, the maker of the of uh, the map editor. The I think it's called the FAF map editor, I guess. It's the Ozone X map editor. And he's made some other maps. He made Old Zone Islands. Not sure what other maps he's made, but uh, 
He's done some great stuff. His map editor is used quite a lot. So, anyway, this game we have first land and only land planned for Torn, only land for the deer. So, this map it's a lot about grabbing the natural reclaim because there are rocks everywhere. Wait a second. I'm going to try this command that somebody told me about, and now we should be a bit smoother. Um, so, yeah, we got a lot of en engineer assistance. You can see this concentrated build power here. Only one engineer reclaiming, uh, so he's probably going to, he's going to have to add to that with maybe the next engineers pretty soon. You can see a lot of engineers queued up from a lot of, from different factories. You can see Bladir making engineers out of multiple factories. And actually walking with his AC already. Torrent with the early scout. That's the spot. Early air factories. And also early bombers if uh, if they should fly over its path. So Bladir turns around to take it out and uh, reroutes his ACU. So that that also is uh, quite nice that he made it Bladir like walk around more instead of uh, building and such. It all counts. Four factories done for a torrent. Only three done so far. Fourth one about to finish. Power income is equal. Expansion quite equal. So maybe Torn is slightly ahead here. But it's very... Yeah. No big differences here. Very... Well, a, a nice quick hydro for Torin. That's nice. And the ACU is going to take the mixes. Build the hydrocarbon. So yeah, let's look at the the economy. Bladir with a lot more mass in the bank. Maybe he's reclaimed too much and built too little. This is kind of what you want. You want to be getting as much reclaim as you can spend, and you want to you want to be spending uh, more than your opponent. And reclaiming just enough to fund it. A lot of well, let's see how the Aurora do anyway now on this uh, this nice flat ground for them. Already raided two mexes and got some kills in the middle or some damage at least. More raiding here. The Aurora's are doing the raiding, the Magis are not. And now we see some nice Torn Micro. Torn for a while did play only Aeon. He is, uh, definitely knows how to play this faction well. And has pretty nice Aurora Micro at the best of times. So will Bloodier go for T2 land even to... I don't see any T2 land coming for him, and that might be a problem. It looks like Torn has a few more units where we have 22 Aurora and only 10 Mantis right now. We have 12 factories, well, maybe 10. Some of those aren't finished. Less for Torrent. And his ACU is heading straight towards Bladir's base. He's going straight for the straight for the throat here. All of his Aurora and his ACU arriving at the edge of Bladir's base right now. And his ACU is way out here. And this could be a very nasty move by Torrent. He's now baiting units into his ACU, which are gonna get Oh, this is a this is a bad attack here from Bladir. He's wasting units big time. See these Aurora pick them off, barely taking any damage from out of range. Also his ACU farming some kills. He's on 10 kills now. 
And this this move from the AC is quite nice. Now this engineer could easily be killed, but it's <laughs> it's snuck past. Torrent super slow on these mexes as well, which is not ideal for him. But Bladir is just trapped in his corner. Can't do anything. He's now again these mexes have already been raided. You're going to get raided again. And uh, this the use of. Uh, Torn's use of his ACU and his units is very nice right now. Blood Deer now adding a lot of Medusa to try and take out these Aurora. And I just saw two got popped immediately. Those two might have died if they hadn't uh, turned around quickly. And now Torn moving in with his with his units. And well, doesn't want to move in too far. He's backing off now. You can see the the mantis are capable of dodging some aurora shots, but you got to go from side to side to uh, dodge those shots. Now bombers from Bladir, they are required because uh, he's having a difficult time dealing with these aurora. Look at the, you can see them just popping mantis on the way past. But the bombers are coming and they're gonna kill so many Aurora if they're if they're not taken out quickly. There's very little anti air so far. Now it's being mixed in, so Bladir men are better make hay while the sun shines. Oh eight kills on that bomber. Killed maybe five units there in one pass. And now Bladir looking in a pretty decent spot now. His units are able to do some damage. He's got out of his base. He even still has this engineer over here. Took all those ma mass extractors. He's, take, he's taking mass over here. He's reclaiming the engineer. He has a lot of mass extractors. Quite even on reclaim. Very even overall. If, let's look at the unit count. So it's half and half Mantis Medusa for Blood Ears. Still no T2 land though. Torrent 67 Aurora. Only four anti-air. I think his anti-air has been killed here because there definitely was one here. He's now making static anti-air turrets which are actually getting killed over here. And that's a long line of PD. I don't think, I don't think he wants to make all of those to be honest. Oh, he gets a PD up in this corner but uh, Medusa quickly stun it. Upgrade coming for Bladir's commander, and that's the gun. With a lot of assistance. Oh, look at the... In the base of Torn, we have T2 air. And here's an air scout from Bladir. But he's not scouting the base. It's just hovering next to the base. We still have only T2. Only uh, Sorry, only T1. No T2 mass extractors, no T2 land, no T2 air. Oh, this scout, he's so close, but he does not see Torin making these gunships. I mean, Mercy's might be even better, but uh, he's, he's going for gunships. And he's making, he's planning on making a lot of them. And this, oh, look at this scout. If this scout sees it. Even if the scout sees it, the problem is Bladir has he doesn't even have T2 land, so there's no option of making flak. He can only make T1 mobile anti air, which is not uh, doesn't have the damage output to stop. Um, doesn't have the AOE either to stop gunships like this from doing a lot of damage. And I think these gunships are going to come right for this gun ACU. Torrent's getting overrun on the left side now. So many bombers. So many Mantis and Medusa. The Medusa are really necessary. Versus the Aurora. On the right side he's getting run over as well. His AC is actually in danger here from these units. Well, Oh my god, there's so many gunships. Eight gunships now heading towards the middle and they go straight for the commander. He doesn't have any Inties or no air anti-air fighters at all just gunships but he has 10 gunships and blood ears acu is 
dropping HP so quickly. He's trying to build anti-air, but it is just too late. Blood Ear doesn't have any antis either. Oh, he's trying to kill the commander, but it's there's too, it's too many Medusa here. They can't do any damage. And Blood Ear gets finished by the gunships. Torrin on 5,000 HP. Survives. And that's a well played from from Torin. Nice, uh, nice choice to go for the the gunships. Blood ears could have seen that for sure. He had the scout here for so long, just hovering, but he never scouted the base, which is a that's a big mistake to make there. And the T two land was quite late for him, so no flak to protect him. If he had two flak. He would probably survive. If he had three flak, he would definitely be fine. One flak would probably just get sniped immediately, and the gunships would finish him, but... Uh, yeah, nice nice snipe to win it for Torin, and Torin wins the series 4-2. to two, And that's two ladder arena wins in a row for Torin. He beat me in the first one, he beat Bloodir in this one. That's a big scalp, and um, yeah, well played. I like how he did it. The the shield they see you in the last game. Aeon gunships, gunship snipe in this one. I mean, with all this mass on the map, you can definitely afford to invest in something like this. So well played, and uh, thanks to Mountain for hosting the tournament. He started the April one now so go check out the ladder and see see who's playing there Bladir's playing Torrin's playing and they're probably the two favorites again to get to the uh, the finals but Nexus is close Nexus is only 30 points behind Torrin so he could definitely catch up and take the second spot it looks like Bladir if he plays ladder will definitely be in there because he has such a high rating 2350 Anyway, that's it for this cast. That's it for the March Ladder Arena casts. And um, I will see you all very soon. Goodbye.